come to the house of the Lord. What a privilege God has given us to be in his house. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm speaking in this service on a message that I've entitled, Cultured by the Word. Cultured by the Word. I believe we are all familiar with the term culture. Culture simply means the customary beliefs, social forms, and material or major traits of a people. Please, it is a step-by-step -step teaching because that is the only way we can grow and mature in the things of the Spirit. As I talked about, line upon line, preset upon preset. Number one, features of God's Word. It is living and powerful. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12. It is living and powerful. The word of God is not like the words of man. The word of God is living. It is powerful. That is, it carries capacity to transform. It carries capacity to change lives. To change situations. It is living, it is alive. John 6 and 63, the master said, The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 23, Peter is giving us several features of the word there. One of them, he says, the word of God which lives. It is a living force. It is capable of changing conditions and situations. Number two, I'm running very quickly. It is able to build and make wise. That's number two feature of the word of God I want us to look at. It is able. One of the things that you find in scripture is ability to build. Ability to make wise. Ability to build. No matter how dilapidated any aspect of your life could be, I want you to know that you can rebuild yourself in those dimensions of your life through the scriptures. It is able to build us up and to make wise. The word of God is a fountain of wisdom. A fountain of wisdom. Two scriptures very quickly, Acts 20, verse 32. Apostle Paul is talking to the Ephesian leadership. He says, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So scriptures are not empty. They carry virtues and blessings for God's people. The scriptures are able to build us up. You want to build your marriage? Go for the word. You want to build a successful career? Go for the word. You want to build a mighty ministry? Go for the word. Everything needed for the building of men is packaged in the scriptures. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 to 15, Apostle Paul, the aged, is talking to his son in the ministry, Timothy. He says, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise. Yes. The scriptures carry capacity to instruct. Wisdom there signifies instructions. Signifies instructions. 
Because read Proverbs 2 verses 1 to 2, Proverbs 3 verses 1 to 2, Proverbs 4 verses 1 to 2. You see the man of God saying, my son, my son, my son, my son, if you receive my words. Chapter 3 verse 1, chapter 3 verse 1. My son, do not forget my law. Chapter 4 verse 1, chapter 4 verse 1. Hear my children, the instruction of a father. Yes, yes. He's talking about the word. That is the father talking to us. He says, if you can heed to my instructions as packaged in the scriptures, you're going to build a life that is going to be a marvel to people around you. Number three. Features of God's word. Number one, it is living and powerful. Number two, it is able to build and make wise. Number three, it is indomitable indestructible and incorruptible it is indomitable that is it cannot be defeated indestructible it cannot be destroyed and incorruptible it cannot fail it cannot fail the scriptures the word of God cannot fail now hear me in Isaiah 55 verses 10 to 11 the prophet of God is likening the word to rain he says the rain that comes down on the earth does not fail to cause the earth to burn it does not fail to cause the earth to bring forth and bound, it does not fail. I have not seen rain that does not produce vegetation. It says, so is the word of God. It shall always prosper in the thing for which God is setting it. Give me verse 11 please. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper. It shall prosper. It is a guaranteed settlement that the word of God must prosper every time God sends it out. It is indomitable. In John chapter 1, Verses 1 to 5, the Bible is showing us the indomitable nature of the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was with God, and he was with God in the beginning. Verse number 3, please. Oh my God, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. The word can never fail. Man will fail, but the word of God can never fail. It is not possible, sir. It is not possible. That is why it is a blessing for the believer to stand on the word. To stand on what, sir? Stand on the word of God. Tell your neighbor, stand on the word of God. Now, I want you to see verses 4 to 5. Because it says, in him, meaning in the word, was life. And this life was the light of man. Now hear me. Verse number 5. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. There is no darkness greater than light. There is no darkness greater than what? Light. The word of God is the light of man. And this light functions against darkness. It shines in darkness. And there's no darkness that can resist it. There's no darkness that can resist it. The Bible speaking in Genesis chapter 1, for example, and verse number 2, talking about the state in which the earth was. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. 
How did God correct that? Look at verse number 3 for example. And God said, Let there be light. And there was what, sir? Light. Darkness had to vamoose. So it doesn't matter your current positioning. If there is any kind of darkness anywhere, you can dispel it at the instance of the light of God's word. You can dispel any kind of darkness from anywhere in your life through the platform of the light of scripture. The light of scripture. Because the word of God is life. And this life becomes light. And when this light shines forth, darkness must disappear. The meaning is, the presence of darkness signifies the absence of light. The presence of darkness is evidence of the absence of what? Light. I hope you understand what I'm saying. The presence of sickness means there is absence of light on health. Revelation on health. Revelation of scripture on healthy issues. The presence of the darkness of financial hardship in a man's life is evidence of the absence of the light of God's word on financial prosperity. Because if there was light, that light would have shone in that darkness and darkness would have disappeared. So if there is darkness anywhere in your life, you don't necessarily need to look for pastor's hand. You need the light of God's word. To change that darkness. To relocate that darkness. To dispel that darkness. I hope you understand my English. Number four. It carries healing virtues. I'm showing you features of the word. Number four. It carries healing virtues. Packaged in the word of God. Are the healings of men. In any dimension of life. Because he heals the word. Meaning Jesus. Who is the word personified healed all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people Matthew 4 23 Matthew 9 35 he healed every sickness and every disease among the people that is what he did the word that became flesh healed all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. So the word of God is medicinal. If you like, God's word is his medicine bottle or medicine syringe. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 22. What is going to happen when you incline your ear to the word of God? Verse 21. When you don't let them depart from your eyes. Look at verse 22. It says, For they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. So there is no sickness found in any part of your flesh, in any part of your body that the word of God cannot heal. Is it your eyes? Is it your reproductive system? Is it your urinary system? There is no disease that can be positioned in any part of your flesh that the word of God cannot cure. It is health 
to your flesh. Um, let's, let's take Psalm 107, verses 19 to 20. Psalm 107, verses 19 to 20. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. How did they do it? He sent his word and healed them. He sent his word. So God's word is God's healing messenger. God's word is God's healing messenger. He sent his word and his word healed the people. And as I'm speaking to you right now, healing is taking place in your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said in the name of Jesus. Number five, it is creative. The word of God is creative. Hebrews 11, verse number three. It is creative. By faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. That word frame means create. It means create. The worlds were created. The worlds were brought from the invisible to the visible by the word. That is why we must never come to the word lightly, haphazardly, casually, jokingly. No. The Bible is a serious book. It is our creator's manual for our buoyant living. The Bible. Our creator's what? Instructional manual for our dominant and buoyant living. When we say that the word is creative, what do we mean? I want to say this. What that means is that when a word from the Lord comes, it creates even what is not in existence. When revelation comes, that revelation carries the capacity to create, to bring into physical reality that which never existed. Yeah. That is why prophecies and revelations or call them promises of God should never be doubted on the account of what is obtaining on the ground at the time you are receiving it. Hope you understood what I said. I'll come again. Prophecy, revelation, or the promise of God should never be doubted on the account of what is obtaining presently at the time of receiving it. So if you're Sarah and God is saying by this time next year you're going to hold a baby, don't doubt that promise on the premise of your physical realities presently. Because the revelation that has come carries the capacity to change your environment for the manifestation of the spirit of the promise or the object of the promise. I don't know whether it is making sense. So I'm moving to number six, therefore. Features of God's word. Number one, it is living and powerful. Number two, it is able to build and make wise. Number three, it is indomitable, indestructible, and incorruptible. Number four, it carries healing virtues. Number five, it is creative. Number six, it is prophetic. The word of God is prophetic. Prophetic. In your Bible, it is called the confirmed word of prophecy. What is it, sir? 
the confirmed word of prophecy. The King James will say the sure word of prophecy. The sure word of prophecy. Second Peter chapter 1 verses 17 to 19. Can we have it in the King James Version? For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. He's talking about what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration. When Jesus went there with Peter, John, and James. And Peter says, what we saw that day, we were not permitted to say it while the master was still alive. Now that he has long gone back to heaven, I can write about it. Is it making sense here? For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Verse 18. And this voice which came from heaven, we held. That is the thing he told them. He said, please shut your mouth. This is not the right time to be talking about this when we go down the mountain. So we see him now for the first time writing about it to the saints. He says, this voice which came from heaven we held. When we were with him in the holy mount. When we, we, there is John, Peter, and James. Verse 19. We have also a more sure word of what? Prophets. Where unto ye do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn. And the death star rise in your house. The word of God. Please. It is Peter who is telling them in the same passage. That we have not believed cunningly devised fables. What we are telling you about is real. He says what we are holding on is the sure word of prophecy. You can never make a mistake standing on the promises of God. You can never make a mistake standing on the promises of God. And I am appealing to everyone listening to me. It is time to stand on the word of God. It is time to believe the word of God like never before. It is time to expose ourselves to the scriptures like we have never done before. It is time to create convictions and beliefs and tenets based on the word of God. In Isaiah chapter 40 verse number 8 The Bible has this to say Isaiah chapter 40 And verse number 8 The grass Weavers The flower fades But the weight of our God Stands forever The word Is eternal isn't it It lives Forever. 1 Peter 1 23. It lives forever. Not only is it incorruptible, 1 Peter 1 23, please. Not only is it incorruptible, the Bible says it lives forever. That way it abides means lives forever. It lives and abides forever. You can bank on it. You can stand on it. Psalm 119 verse 89. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. If you want to live a settled life, go for the settled word of God. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled. Come on. It is time to live a settled life. And you can never live one unless you settle for the word. It is forever set on. You can't change it. Somebody shout hallelujah. When we say that the word is prophetic.
What we mean, number one, is that God fulfills what his word says. What he may say to you may not be for now, but you can rest assured that he will bring it to pass. The prophecy of scripture can and must be trusted because we know that God cannot lie. Numbers 23, 19 there. Numbers 23 and verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. It is one a man who lie. God does not. Psalm 89, verses 34 to 35. My covenant I will not break. God will never promise you something that he doesn't have the ability to accomplish. The evidence that God will fulfill something is that he has spoken it. I don't know what you got what I said. Did you get what I said? The evidence or proof that something will come to pass is that God has said it. That's the evidence. Because he can not lie. Can I have verse 35, Psalm 89, please? Once have I sown by my holiness, I will not lie to David. If God could not lie to David, who are you? That all of a sudden God should lie to you. <laughs> he says, I will not lie to David. When God says something, his integrity backs it up. Hmm? Whenever God will utter a promise, his integrity, his holiness will back it up. He says, once have I sown that I will not lie to David. What I say is what my people will see. God is able to fulfill what he has promised. That was the conviction that Abraham had. When the almighty God came to him in that old age to say that you and your wife Sarah are going to have a baby. Romans chapter 4, isn't it? Verse 21. Romans chapter 4 and verse 21. That he says that Abraham was fully convinced that what God had promised he was also able to perform. He speaks according to his ability. So you can bank on any revelation that came to you about possibilities that accrue to you in life. You can stand on those. You can stand on those possibilities as given in those promises. You can stand on those possibilities no matter the situation. Somebody shout hallelujah. The word being prophetic will also mean that it predicts or promises a great future for God's children. When we say that the word is prophetic, it means it does not only speak of that which addresses our current situations, it also shows us our possibilities and our identities pertaining to the future. By extension, what that means is that we can know our tomorrow today. We can know our tomorrow today because of the prophetic nature of the word of God. 
because of the prophetic nature, the predictive nature of the word of God. I can know, I don't need anybody to tell me anything. I can just read the Bible and get a full picture of what lies ahead of me. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, or in my lifetime. Because when I go to Isaiah 60, verse 22, a little one shall become a thousand. And I ask myself, where am I today? I'm little. Okay? But the Bible says, the little one, the little me, shall become what? A thousand. I don't need a prophet to tell me that I will become a thousand. It's there, sir. Scripture has already prophesied that me shall become a thousand. And it has also shown me there in Isaiah 6 verse 22 who shall do it. It has shown me who shall do it. It says, I the Lord. That means I don't care whether my uncle likes me or not. He, he, he does not feature in the equation. I don't care whether my boss likes me or not. I don't care whether my neighbor likes me or not. They don't feature in the equation. Because it is the Lord who shall hasten it. So it's already programmed. That a little one shall, shall, shall means come rain or sunshine. It is preconditioned. Whether in this government or not, it is already predefined that the little one shall become a thousand. The scriptures are prophetic. And by exposing yourself to the scriptures, you can know your tomorrow in advance. You may be seated. I read the story of Bishop David Oedipo when God was calling him into ministry to say you're not going to do anything. Just go f f full throttle to ministry. He asked God a question. What am I going to eat? And how am I going to survive? For to beg I am ashamed. And God took him to a scripture as he was reading the Bible. Jesus spoke to his disciples. When I sent you without bag, without scripts, without court, did you lack anything? And all the 12 disciples, including Thomas the Demas, said, we lacked nothing. And based on that scripture, he was emboldened to launch out into the ministry. No human being came to him with one eye closed. He said, hey, oh, hey Depo, that says the Lord. Hey. You, you shall, uh, uh, he just read in the Bibles. Uh, when he sent them without bank, without money, they lacked nothing, then I don't need money to survive in ministry. He launched out. Based on scriptural calculations of the revelation that hit him. When was the last time you read your Bible and you came to to a verse and you left the Bible and you jumped. He said, wow! What did I just see? What did I just see? Some of you, you read Bible, you don't see anything, sir. That is why you can spend days without reading your Bible. Because every time you read it, you can't see anything in it. You can't see anything in the Bible. That is why there are some people that they use the Bible as a mechanism to sleep. They use it as a sleeping tablet. If at 11 p.m. 
Sleep is not coming on the eyes. They know what to do. I will read my Bible. And I know before I know it, the devil will make me sleep because he doesn't want me to read the Bible. That is why they dream funny dreams because their sleep is caused by the devil who is preventing them from reading the Bible. No change. Listen to me. If the word of God is not changing you, you become a concern to God. Because that's the supernatural divine liquid he has given you for your transformation. It is called the word. Paul talks about the washing of water by the word. Ephesians 5, 26. The washing of water by the word. The washing of water by the word. Mm. Somebody shout hallelujah. So many things to talk about, but what I want to say in summary is let us take the word of God serious. Why are you so fearful sometimes? Why do you doubt sometimes you believe, sometimes you are worried and you are anxious about the future? about your possibilities is it going to work why do you have those instabilities in your life it's because number one you don't know the bible number two is because you have not taken what the bible says as your final authority so in your mind you think there is a possibility that scriptures may not work you have made provision for scriptural failure. Because you've not understood the fact that the word of God is supernatural. It is divine. And the divine does not fail. Rise on your feet. This service has been called a career and family breakthrough service. What kind of service? Career and family breakthrough service. So in the next couple of minutes, we want to allow the Holy Spirit, the angels of God, want to allow the hand of God to distribute career and family breakfast. In Isaiah chapter 40, verses 4 to 5, the Bible gives us a picture of the kind of obstacles that hamper people's progress in life. Isaiah 40 and verse number 4 talks about hills talks about valleys. It talks about crooked places. And then lastly, it talks about rough places. The reason why these things will show forth is verse number five. They have one purpose to hinder the revelation of the glory of the Lord as allocated and assigned to individuals, families, churches, and communities. The enemy is aware of the ordained glory that has to be revealed. The ordained glory concerning your career, concerning your children, that is why he will put stumbling blocks, crooked places in the academic life of your children so that they begin to perform as if they were dull when in actual fact they carry the glory of distinction and excellence. 
But the word of prophecy says that every hill shall be brought low. Every valley shall be lifted. Every crooked place shall be made straight and every rough place shall be made smooth. So that the ordained glory of God can be revealed for the sight of everybody around you. Meaning that following this service the glorious people could not see in your life because they were not evident. They shall begin to see in the name of Jesus. Amen. I thought I was talking to you. Can I hear a loud a shout of amen? amen? I want to give you one minute to pray dismantling valleys, hills, rough places and crooked places anywhere in your life. And as you are dismantling them at the end of your prayer, I want you to begin to prophesy the revelation of the glory of God in your career, in your family, in your health, in your finances, in your businesses, in the works of your hands. The kind of glory that shall be evident to all. It was Paul who wrote to Timothy. He said, let your progress be evident to all. Let everybody around you see that you are making progress. And such shall be the testimony of people that will pray seriously in the next one minute. Lift your voice and begin to pray for yourself. How many are praying? Lift your voice. Begin to pray for yourself. Lift your voice. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. Shakata rigadi basuta ragadande, masata rikatala bakuta rigada, jakanda rikatinda liposita rigadi. Anything and everything that has been hindering the revelation of the glory of God, financially, maritally, in career, in all aspects of life, we dismantle you right now in the name of Jesus. We dismantle you right now in the name of Jesus. We dismantle you right now in the name of Jesus. Any power that had vowed never to see me rise in career, never to see me rise in my family, I scatter you in the name of Jesus. I scatter you in the name of Jesus. I scatter you in the name of Jesus. I scatter you right now. I scatter you. 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 Shakata ragadala baba basita rigadi. Shakata ragadala mama mama sata ragadala mahandi. Every door that must open for the glory of God to be revealed in our careers, in our families, we command it open right now in the name of Jesus. We command that door open. 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 Shakata ragadala baba baba sita rigadi. Yakata ragadala mama mama sita rigadi ya. Shakata ragadala mama 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 sita rigadi ya. How many are praying? Shakata ragadila baba sita rigadi. Lakata ragadala mama mama sita rigadi. Shakata ragadala mama mama masaya. Every crooked place, every rough place, every valley, every hill, every mountain that was standing in our pathway to hinder 
the revelation of the glory of God. We trust you in the name of Jesus. We scatter you in the name of Jesus. We level you in the name of Jesus. We destroy you in the name of Jesus. Let there be testimonies for God's children. Let there be breakthroughs for God's children. Let there be change in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. I decree this hour that every ordained glory that could not reach you on the account of these valleys, hills, rough places, and crooked places, now that they are destroyed, may that glory be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive financial glory, Amen. career glory, marital glory, academic glory, the glory of divine health, the glory of progress, the glory of success, the glory of favor, the glory of divine connections. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Beginning this hour, may you live a glorious life. 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 I said, may you live a glorious life in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory is coming to you. I said, glory is coming to you. Glory is coming to your career. Glory is coming to your children. Glory is coming to your marriage. Glory is coming to your finances. In the mighty name of Jesus. The meaning is beginning this hour. No more shame in your life. No more shame in your life. No more shame in your life. No one here shall suffer shame again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Good people, can I hear a loud shout of amen? Shouts of glory shall never cease in your family. Shouts of glory shall never cease in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you see your bank balance, you shall shout glory. When you look at your daughter's and your son's school report, you shall shout glory. Ay, 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 ay. Glory is coming to you. 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 In the name of Jesus, you shall live a glorious life. You shall live a glorious life. You shall run a glorious business, a glorious career. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Mashakata ragadala baba sata ragada. Shakata rigadila bahata ragada. Sakata ragada. This church is full of glory. This church is full of glory. You are full of glory. Your family is full of glory. Your children are full of glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh my God, lift your two hands and appreciate the King of Kings. Appreciate the King of Kings, everybody, and lift your voice. Are you looking for books authored by Pastor Esau Banda, the senior pastor of Pentecost International Christian Center, PICC? Here is a list of places where you can find the books. Blantyre, Mountain of Fire, Wait Alive Ministries, Claim Mabuku, and Thank God Stationery. Mzuzu, Claim Mabuku, Ncheu, Mpumulo Enterprise, Lilongwe, Timkweze Bus Service, Kaunda Filling Station, Area 30 Total Filling Station, Area 36 Total Filling Station, SH Investments City Center, PICC Bookshop in Area 49, Biznoate Filling Station, City Center Restaurant, Grey Mata, and Claim Mabuku. Kasungu, BP Filling Station, Toto Filling Station, Kasungu Inn, and Mponela Filling Station. For more information, call on 0995 500 800 or 0999 308 988.
in your body, you look at the word of God concerning your healing. The possessing of your possessions is at the mercy of your confession. I declare this hour that all is well with your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your voice, everyone. Let's celebrate the King of Kings. Let's give him thanks. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We worship you. We love you. We bless you. We magnify your holy name. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Lift your two hands. Now may the Lord bless you. May he give you peace. Peace in your homes. Peace in your health. Peace in your going out. Peace in your coming in. Peace on every side. All round peace is your portion in the name of Jesus. You are walking in the glory of God. This week you are walking in the glory of God. Financial glory. Marital glory, workplace glory, Amen. business glory, Amen. glory in your house, Amen. glory on every side, Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. no shame shall reach you, Amen. no shame will reach you, Amen. you are going very far, Amen. I said you are going very far, Amen. I said you are going very far, Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Goodness and mercy shall follow you this Amen. week. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. the grace of God shall be exceedingly abundant in your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. receive your connections. Amen. You are being connected with your helpers, Amen. with your partners. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. I said in the name of Jesus, Amen. I said in the name of Jesus, Amen. this is your week of favor. Amen. Wherever you go, they shall favor you. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, you believe that? Shout a better amen. amen. Psalm 23 and verse number 6. Surely, Surely goodness and mercy shall, shall follow me all the days, days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. amen. God bless you.